questo, questo mm, l'ho mostrato prima eh, divano this is a, um, e sofa. una poltroncina and, uh, small chair. una bergera and then there's also no. a bergera I don't have that per... um, I designed this for Tacchini it's the sofa last year the bergera this e year and I must say that uh, i worked uh, with the brand, with the owner of the brand, he's an, an old carpenter. E, 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 appunto, and when they contacted me and told me I had to work to, on a series of objects that were aimed and targeted to the contract and not to their own collections. Well, uh, they told me they started as carpenters and then they were the suppliers for Airbnb and they then became and founded their own brand became the dreamers and when they told me about being carpenters and I don't know, I immediately um, thought of patches and I don't know why but um, I made an entire research on the various patches um, that we have around the world and I realized that this fact of fixing and putting a patch onto something because there's a hole with a piece of fabric or it basically became um, a sort of um, prothesis especially when you were producing some objects for sportswear like for example jackets for motorbikes or uh, skiing pants or things like that and from this thought, I thought uh, to um, basically reverse what usually happens in the padding, right? You have a, um, a padded a padding, which usually has a pillow, right? And I made sure that the entire lining is totally lining the element and the pillow is inserted in the lining before you actually dress the entire sofa. And I emphasize and outlined this scene, the part of the padding where there is the internal pillow. This is rather a project done for MAG, it's an entire family. The first born is this chair called L. L. And um, this brand that works both in the contract and in the office. Uh, well, um, they wanted an operative chair, a, um, a chair just to sit in front of the computer all day. Well, my first thought was taking a look at all these chairs, which are physically like some Herman Miller, the Open, or other things, and try to understand if whatever person could actually use them, all of the various functions that these offer. And I realized that well, one usually regulates two things, the height, the inclination of the backrest, and maybe the armrest. And from this consideration, I decided to design a chair that didn't have a lot of different screws that you could actually regulate everything, but that was comfortable. And from this, from the lounge to the headrest, the I did a series. This is the first project that I've done for this Swedish brand called Offit. And probably it's one of the projects that have marked my path positively as a designer. And here, once again, it's pretty fun, at least to me, the story and how this was basically created. It comes from an unsuccessful, uh, well, I told you, I have a Swedish partner, right? And sooner or later, she would have told me, I want to go back home. I knew it.
e io intelligentemente mi ero preparato a usare i already had contacted a series of different swedish brands with which i had to start having a working relationship so that when i would go to sweden i wouldn't feel in vacation i had something to do e contatto offre also on the uh, was contacted and, and uh, uh, I write exactly what I said, exactly what I said to you. They answer and they say, well, oh, yeah, come and visit. I go and visit. They give me a brief. They were uh, searching for a bench. I developed this bench. And the owner of Alta, the, the design manager at Queen Andrews, sees the prototype, he likes it a lot. He tells me that the idea that I had proposed, I said we had to do it with um, rotational molding that would then be injected internally with polyurethane which is basically the same way you do like the cherbis, uh, so the seats for motorbikes. Everything great. They test, they ask about the marketing, get the sales managers if everything works. Everyone's super happy. They do a pre-order of the mold the supplier to actually print and create after a month. They tell me, uh, they're so sorry, but they have just stopped the project and they will not do this bench because they've realized that the cost of transportation from Italy, where this was produced, to Sweden and then from Sweden to the rest of the world, was polluting too much. And I said, oh, what do you mean polluting? No one in Italy ever talked about polluting. Transportation pollutes. What are you talking about? And so they just, oh, I don't know, my project is stopped. And I feel bad about this. It was two years I was working on this thing. It was the first time that people would tell me these were the reasons for stopping a project and just failing it. And then they gave me another brief and they were like, we're looking for a chair that should actually have the same strength of chair one of Maji's in aesthetic terms, which has a sense for our business culture. First thing I think of is I divide the chair. I cut it, I do four legs backwards so that I can actually just mail it in a very small box for the previous experience, right? And just thinking of this functionality that I wanted to give to this chair to be delivered in a very small volume, I also think normally what normally happens in the aesthetics of a product when we're actually designing to break it into pieces, disassemble it, and create some different components. And I think what happens to us as men when we want to represent ourselves in an artificial manner. The artificial representation of men, which are these humanoids, which look like robots, probably from my culture when I was a kid of all the Japanese cartoons that I've looked at. And thinking about this, I imagined I would actually transfer the same thing into a chair. I don't know if I could just take it to a name, but in front of the mirror, I see myself robotized and toning. The step just to try to understand what aesthetics I should give to this product. Well, I looked at a series of videos or anything that could actually remind me of robots. And I find this video of Bjork where she's represented as a robot, totally white. And her um, limbs 
Junctures are not masked, but they're actually shown and they're even emphasized. So I start working on these and uh, I didn't want to hide the fact that there was a junction. I wanted to emphasize it. And so I decide that the structure of the chair is very visible. And a fundamental step is missing besides the aesthetics and the initial idea of decomposing it. How should I uh, The first thing is just do an injection mold and then print it and the brand says, okay. No, the plastic, it's not part of the Scandinavian culture. And what is part of the Scandinavian culture? Well, wood. Therefore, from there, we start a series of experimentation. And they tell me exactly what you could do with the curved wax. And they do not find a supplier that says that this could actually stand up for itself. They communicate that it would never work. And I say, okay, listen, first time the trip or the transportation was struck. Oh, come on, we need to do something. Now you're telling me it doesn't stand up. I asked the brand to say, hey, I know some suppliers which are very good in Udine. There's a district for the development of chairs, which is super important. I go and visit a supplier that I know real well from this experience done with Foscarini. And for you, is it possible to do this chair? Let's try. After a month, I have the prototype of the chair in my trolley. I go to Sweden, I open it, and present the prototype to the person who says, OK, fine, we'll do it in Italy. In the development of the chair, industrially, we discover, though, that the wood curved that we wanted to do for the backrest here would have been a 3D curved wood. It means that inside the fibers of wood would help. There was some plastic that would help uh, the curve. This material is only produced in Germany and so on. It was too expensive. So um, it would cost uh, this chair public price, uh, retail price, 1,200 euros. The brand Offit says we have this technology that we use normally for some acoustic panels to absorb sound, which is a felt with uh, um, They basically grind uh, plastic bottles and they create this sort of felt, synthetic felt which costs very little and when it's printed with a heated process these um, plastic fibers warm up and they just uh, combine and we experiment the fact of printing this uh, chair this felt. And here you see it in the natural format where the frontal part is wood and the back part is felt. And we decide that this is the uh, way we should do. Of the way we worked with this felt for four o'clock in the morning. I was super tired. But the story is not finished yet because the brand, when they decided that I thought of the part of the engineering, let's say, they also asked me to develop the packaging of this chair. And it was just uh, uh, to project a uh, box, and it was like designing the, basically the chair. Same difficulty. And this was the experience. It was presented last year at the fair. The brand and they also presented my own personal thing in Stockholm, my exhibition in Stockholm, where I actually presented a series of other projects. And this made the market and the Scandinavian critics made me no real get my name more famous and be have a great
Did he get any? What did he get any? Did you want to ask? No, it was more of a just finishing your thoughts. So this looks like a movie. <laughs> the whole story here of the road. I wanted to repeat some things I just said. I like the fact that you have uh, this link between Italy and Scandinavian design before Scandinavian uh, saying, no, we cannot do this. And then you solve the problem with the Italian genius with the know how, and then it doesn't work. And then they give another know how the idea of the felt, let's just call it felt, this ping pong back and forth, let's call them know-how. It's uh, very intriguing. And then we've got the product. I'm not saying this, it's everyone knows basically this product has been exalted because it's super intelligent. Besides being respectful for all the concepts we talked about, I, I, I believe this is like the masterpiece. It represents uh, um, like um, a water breaker between um, your beginning and future. Well, actually, I wouldn't call this a water breaker, but um, I believe it's uh, like a glue, actually. It's the exact opposite. It's the product that in some way marks in its development. So my will of trying to combine these two cultures and uh, and in some way it summarizes all these values all together. If it's a, like a water breaker, and this gave me the possibility of breaking some boundaries in the sense that I can actually, uh, gave me the possibility of entering a market that I was a known of, uh, maybe just like the lamp I designed for Foscarini in 2003, the space which has helped me enter in direct contact with some other brands 